This week on Focus on Photography, we talk about Adobe Max and another little bitty problem Adobe had with the data breach. And we talk a little bit about the golden hour. What does that mean in this world of photography? Are you out there getting your time with golden hour? Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Focus on Photography, episode two, recorded on Thursday, October 31st, 2019, the golden hour. Hey folks, welcome to Focus on Photography here on twit.tv. We are here to talk about the latest and greatest camera news, photography news, photography rumors, and just standard day-to-day stuff in the world of a working photographer. I am Ant Pruitt. I'm here with Mr. Michael Wools. Woolsey. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Good morning. <laughs> Happy uh, Halloween. Happy Halloween. We are here on, on October 31st and our, I guess I'm adequately dressed for Halloween, right? Very nice. Wearing my orange, <laughs> looking like a large pumpkin walking around these studios. Don't anybody laugh at, me at that joke, please and thank you. Um, but yeah, this is a, the photography podcast here on the Twit Network where we just want to you know, talk through a few things. We don't do any tutorials, anything like that. This is more of a round table discussion, two cats just hanging out, having a good time talking about the topics. Now we recorded last week's first episode and it just went extremely well. Lots of excellent feedback. Thank you guys for all of that feedback. And, um, Mr. Wolves, they love you, man. (laughs) They love you. No, they love you, man. That's what's up. They love the idea of talking <clears throat> photography and without any kind of um, just having fun talking about it. Yeah, and, and, and it's good to have you here as being our, our, our host each and every week. We're going to record these every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcatcher of choice so you automatically have these feeds pop up each and every Thursday. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and get head. started. and. Let Mr. Wolves, he has some people that he'd like to address here in the NorCal area. So, the yeah, mic's all actually, yours. Um, you know, we got to give great kudos to those firemen, fire, uh, fire women, mm-hmm. uh, first responders who have been doing amazing work up north. And um, with a Kincaid fire, and it's, I cannot uh, imagine right. the, the work that they put into it and the work, uh, the bravery and the yeah. courage behind that. And to just go in and battle that. I don't, I don't think people quite understand the scale of those fires. When, when you see it on the news, um, it's like 30 miles from here, something like that. Right. Yeah. It's about right. Yes. But yet we have all of this smoke that just looks like a regular morning <clears throat> cloud one right. day, morning fog. It, it's, it's, that's pretty, pretty freaking bad. Right. But I, you also have to look at the photographers who are um, cap, um, capturing these um, events right. as well and kind right. of helping us understand what is really happening out there. Right. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, like Eric Castro of, uh, of yeah, the Yeah. You mentioned and, Mr. Castro and man, his work. Oh, he's amazing. Right. But he's oh. been, he gets right in there and, um, and so, as well as uh, Ken Porter and other people like that. Anyways, very, very good people up there. Um, doing the best that they can. Right. And, um, 60, 60% uh, contained. Is that correct? Yep. That's, that right. was the last that we heard yeah. and zero fatalities. Yeah. That's amazing. That's what's up right yeah. there. That's what's up. Good work people. But yeah. Thank you folks. Um, we really appreciate the support for, you know, taking care of our community here in Northern California. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with some, some news of the week. Uh, a couple things. First and foremost, Adobe Max is coming up. I leave for Adobe Max on Sunday. Uh, I don't think I'm a pre- attending any of their pre-conference stuff. I don't think so. I had to check my agenda. Unless they have whiskey? No, <laughs> <laughs> no not quite. <laughs> Good try, though. I like how you're thinking. Um, but yeah, Adobe Max is Adobe's conference that they have each and every year to discuss what they've been working on in the previous year um, and the things that they're you know, trying to put forward, you know, for the future. Um, Photoshop, Lightroom, InDesign, I mean, all of their products, Creative Cloud, uh, they usually try to put something out there a little bit for everybody. And in addition to discussing, you know, what they're working on, they like to give you little sessions and classes for the attendees to go in and sit down, you know, in the 
big old auditorium, if mm-hmm. you will. And it'll be, you know, an hour long or so to learn how to, you know, do better with shortcuts in Photoshop. So, oh, man, that or, sounds amazing, actually. Or figuring out, you know, transitions in Premiere Pro. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's really good. And you're getting some of the best in the business leading those sessions, as well as some of the Adobe evangelists themselves doing it. You know, like from, say, for Photoshop, you have Mr. Terry White. You know, and Terry White is like the, the guy, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to Photoshop evangelism <laughs> and he, and to see him up on stage walking you through how to do this and how to do that. It's pretty neat. And I think it, it's something anybody in the creative space should probably, you know, look in, look into this and start investing in it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it can, can be a little bit pricey. Uh, I think if you go in early, like get your tickets really early, it'll be about $1,500. Oh, wow. But that's for everything. Okay. They have different packages where you just get to see the keynote or you get to see day one and maybe two other little events or what have you. But I highly recommend getting the whole package and staying there, you know, a couple of days because it's like a three day event. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include hotel or anything like that. They have, they'll have some discounts. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, because it's all right downtown LA. Mm -hmm. So everything is right there at the, uh, Staples Center, okay, right there in the middle of everything. So there's a, several hel- hotels right there within a few blocks, and they all have different deals and different, you know, uh, discounts for people there. I highly recommend it because not only are you going to be able to learn what's going on with them, or even just sort of sharpen your skill set mm-hmm. while you're there, but there's an awesome networking opportunity oh, there. I can imagine. You know, you're sitting there and there's thousands and thousands of people there, and I'm talking like over 10,000 that are there to just, <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. and they all think like you, uh-huh. you know, photographers or graphic artists or, or cinematographers, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're all are thinking just like you. Mm-hmm. So you feel at home while you're in there and you get to walk around and hand out your business cards or, you know, just bump into people that are working on something. And next thing you know, you made a connection. Yeah. You might mm-hmm. work on a project with them too, right? Exactly. You kind of expand your, uh, your network. So for 1500 bucks, you get all of that learning, all of that information and an opportunity to help grow your business. So are you going to come back and give us like a workshop? I'm going to come back and try <laughs> to give a little bit of information from what I, I learned. I need some tutorials. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that on <laughs> hands-on photography. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Other show okay. On the that network. sounds good. See, you know, you, you see how I plugged up. Oh show yeah. Yeah. Here? That's very good. I'm trying to learn how to be a pro like everybody else here at twit, you know, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Adobe max is coming up. They're rumoring having some updates for, uh, Lightroom to speed it up and Photoshop to speed it up. But the biggest rumor is Photoshop on an iPad. Mm. Oh, by the way, I uploaded, um, Lightroom onto, uh, my uh, phone yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah, so thank you so much so, for... Man, uh, <laughs> what took you so long? I oh, mean, I, man, it actually well, is pretty nice. I know you like Snapseed, and I have nothing against Snapseed, but you are a creative I, cloud guy that I did not have know. mobile. What the heck? <laughs> Write a check. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, wolves. I'm so sorry. Come on, man. But yeah, it, it, that's, that's the biggest rumor right now is Photoshop on an iPad. And I have mixed feelings about that because... When I think of using photo editors on a mobile device, I'm thinking of just just sort of quick adjustment, quick hitter kinds of things. Uh, when I'm in Photoshop on the workstation, it, it's a lot more time consuming. You know, mm-hmm. you, you got multiple layers, you got multiple adjustment layers, uh, popping in and out and messing around with selections and trying to refine that. It, it's it's a lot more work, and I never consider being able to do that kind of work on a mobile device because most of the time they don't have the same horsepower that right. a laptop would have or a workstation. So what I have a question. Thoughts? I have a question. Mm-hmm. So how, so is it the photos that you take with your iPad or is it a, how does the, I mean, what's, <clears throat> well, I, I hope <laughs> that they allow you to sync up, you know, from the cloud. Okay. Um, or, well, I mean, there are different devices that you can plug into an mm-hmm. iPad to pull things okay. off an SD card. So, uh, with i what's the new ipad os i think that's what it's called ipad os you mm-hmm. should be able to have better functionality as far as file system got workflow. it okay supposedly mm-hmm. my ipad is updated and it still confuses me trying to find files oh, for shoot. stuff okay but we'll see we'll see so i i, I don't know i just didn't 
I'm sort of mixed on it. Yeah. You know, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I'm not a big iPad user. Okay. And so therefore it's, um, I'm not in that um, realm. I would feel though that I, I, I love my setup mm -hmm. in my, at my um, studio. And so I have the right. two monitors. I feel like I have uh, plenty of juice right. and that I'm working with raw files. Right. And, right. um, and it's like you talk, we're talking about the flow is a little bit different. Right. Um, I think though, if you were, um, let's say that you needed to do something very, very quick and you didn't have access to your laptop or mm -hmm. anything like that, that mm -hmm. the iPad would be the next best thing. And so I would think that that would be, um, very useful if you needed to get a job done right away or Real something quickly. small. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure they've considered that in this mm -hmm. in the release that they're rumoring, but we'll see. We'll we'll find out more on Monday, November fourth, whatever day that is. I think that is the fourth. And it's um, probably uh, really uh, user friendly too. I would imagine. So it has to be with mm -hmm. it being a touch interface, mm -hmm. you know. And again, that's my mixed side of it because uh, I, I think about using keyboard shortcuts inside mm -hmm. of Photoshop because Photoshop is so daggum massive as an app. There's, there's so many different menus. You, you get lost with your mouse right. clicking through all of the menus. Mm -hmm. So most people will tell you, learn the keyboard shortcuts so it'll help speed things up okay. for you. So how are they going to integrate shortcuts inside of a tablet? I'm curious to find that out. Right. If that is what they're really, really working on. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they, they mentioned Photoshop on an iPad last year at Adobe Max. You know, they just said, hey, we're working on it. But they didn't say it'll be ready in such and such year. Mm -hmm. They just said, hey, we're, we're, we're trying. We're okay. trying. You know, and they didn't let you see it. Mm -hmm. They pulled us all into this little press corner and talked about it um, because they also were talking about um, the app that's now called Adobe Fresco. And so they mm -hmm. showed us Fresco, mm -hmm. but they didn't show us Photoshop. You're like, yeah, we're working on it. We're uh, trying. So I would I, actually, we'll I, see. I think I would have fun um, trying it and just seeing what it's about. Yeah. I mean, if, especially if you could, you know, pull up something from um, the cloud or whatever, right. it'd be interesting to try it. Right. So <clears throat> I wouldn't. Now, are you, are you into like uh, digital painting or anything like that? Uh, no, there's a, um, although there's this one app, I forgot what it's called, um, into it. I mean, anyways, it's uh, where you could actually do graphics on top of a photograph mm -hmm. and, um, especially if you're using it for any kind of, um, uh, print media or whatnot, you kind of, um, I've tried that a couple of times and it seems like it's fun, but I don't have the, the right pen. You know, oh, yeah. so it's, it's, um, the Apple pencil is pretty nice yeah. on, um, on an iPad. I, I, I was uh, I was against it at first until I tried it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a nice like, tool. A hundred dollars for a stylus? Come on! You know, know, but but it's, it's very nice. It, when I tried it, it, it's I dig it, especially mm -hmm. inside of Lightroom because you can use the pressure sensitivity mm -hmm. when you're using the adjustment brush in Lightroom. You know, so that that's that's something to look forward to. So that's that's Adobe Max. I'll have more information about that next week um, after I attend it. We'll talk about it on Fops show next week fop as in focus on photography for the new folks popping in so we'll talk about it next week on that show all right one more thing about adobe oh boy um this is a tech network here mm, you do get okay. that right mm -hmm. you know so so i gotta give a little bit of tech news <laughs> just a couple of days ago as according to zdnet.com Adobe left 7.5 million Creative Cloud user records exposed online. Whoops. 7.5 million. Oh, boy. Um, there is a silver lining. No passwords were, were exposed. Mm -hmm. Just the username. Well, not username. The actual email address. But I guess you can consider that the username. The email address was exposed and everything that those email addresses had for us applications because some people will only have the photography package. They'll only have Photoshop and Lightroom. Then you'll have people like me that had the full suite. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is not good. No, <laughs> this is not good. Well, it seems like every other week or so there is a, uh, a, a some type of data breach, whether it's a bank or, or somebody has something out there exposed to the World Wide web and people can grab it. With this one, though, they, they, they found out about it and fixed it the same day. 
right then. So that's good. They jumped on Mm -hmm. it quickly. But there's still a threat because you could get an email. I could get an email that says, hey, this is Adobe Services, and Mm -hmm. we're trying to update this, and yada, yada, yada. And you put in your information. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they call it a phishing attack. Mm -hmm. And it puts a lot of... uh, uh, it makes you have to open your eyes a little bit and just be a little more careful now. Yeah, I actually had a, a issue a couple of weeks ago where I needed to um, to um, clean my uh, computer because right. I somehow got like a fish, right? Or was fished? I don't know how you the terms, but anyways, mm. it really messed up my um, the um, safari. It was Yikes. very interesting, but I've come to this point where. I feel like everything that we're doing anyways is being exposed. I, I, I feel like <laughs> I'm not so, sure. Wait a minute. So are you saying you trust no one? Everything's exposed? Is that what you're I saying? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, um, That's a pretty common theme here at the network is you know, we don't trust anybody. Is that right? It's, yeah. It's okay. a pretty common theme. All right. So, well, yeah, I guess so you're I'm, not alone. I guess you're I'm, part of the, I'm, I'm pr- part of the tribe then. <laughs> you're amongst <laughs> friends, Wolves. Nice. Yeah, this this is um I'm I'm glad Adobe jumped on it really quickly and got it fixed the same day. Um I believe what was the firm? I want to give them credit for finding it. Uh what was the firm's name? Uh da, 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 da. Okay, I do not have the firm's name in front of me. I'm sorry, but a shout out to Security Discovery. Thank you, Mr. John A, for saving my bacon here <laughs> <laughs> security discovery all right they took care of it and, and let everybody know so again folks if you're using not only just adobe creative cloud but any of these online services make sure you're securing your account um, don't use the same password for everything first and foremost if you can use a password manager do that such as LastPass, which is a sponsor on our network they'll manage your passwords for you so you don't have to remember them also enable some type of multi-factor authentication. So after you put your password in, you're going to be prompted to, you know, verify again that you are who you are. So that gives you one more extra layer of security. So mm-hmm. just keep that stuff in mind. Watch your email boxes uh, for the next <laughs> couple months. Uh, I'm not even going to say days, uh-huh. next couple months, because they could try this stuff later on and hit you with a, a, a suspicious looking email and you just get caught off guard. Right. So. And also educate your kids. Right. You have, you have two teenagers too. who are diving into the tech, you know, the tech world. So right. they also need to be educated as to, you know, what to look for and to really be on the lookout for yep. sure. Indeed. Indeed. All right. So that is it for our tech part and news part <laughs> of today's uh show here focus on photography i'm ant pruitt and again this is the twit.tv podcast network here with mr michael wools also known as wools our co-host here uh just hit hanging out with you folks every thursday 9 a.m pacific to talk a little bit of camera stuff a little bit of just photography in general and just chit-chatting about day-to-day life as a working photographer all right, so now let's move into some some theory stuff. I was looking at fstoppers.com, and I don't look at that website too often because a lot of times it it, it pisses me off because people get a little too snobby oh. in there and start, why would you shoot this way? Why would you use that mm-hmm. lens? And, and it drives me nuts. We've talked about this before right. off air. Um, but I saw this article about 10 creative photography tricks that are all done in camera. Now with you, I've seen your work, especially which like what you did with the photo booth at the uh, oh, festival right. and mm-hmm. things like that. So I wanted to ask you: Have you ever sat down and, and you know, just for fun, try to figure out some little things you could do in camera that you, you know, little ch- tips and tricks to to put different effects in your shot or, you know, because some people they go all out with Photoshop, right, and add you know different manipulation and things like that, mm-hmm. and then there's other people. Uh, that you'll see online that just use uh, filters, light bulbs, or mm-hmm. anything like that to oh. give an extra effect. Mirrors. Another trick I know a lot of people will take their smartphone and put it right up under their lens as they're shooting mm-hmm. to give an extra reflection in fr- in the frame. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, instead of pulling that into Photoshop, you right. already generated it 
in camera like that. Have you ever thought to play around with little tips and tricks like that? I have actually. I love flares. Oh, okay. So, flare so what is your guy. flare trick? So you right. get like a prism or something, or well, flashlights. So you get the right flashlight, you could really do some beautiful flares, um, kind of off to the side. Mm -hmm. um, also, saw this one guy uh, take out like um, you know, like an egg beater. Yep. And you kind of um, have it go in, uh, in front of the lens, and, just, and it gives it a little sparkle. It's actually really cool. It's hmm. like you have to do it right, though. It's a especially if you're working with a shallow depth of field, right? And it has to be um, uh, in a way that uh, yeah, you're working with a, a depth of field when you're doing something like that. But something that kind of like flutters, mm -hmm. but it's not. Um, it's, you can't. It's not obvious what it is. Almost like a little fairy dust going across right. the screen. And also, <laughs> um, if you want some uh, flickering in the back, I mean, mm -hmm. CDs. So you kind of put oh, up the CD. Man. So it's, uh, wait a minute, do people even know what CDs are anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when was the last time I saw a CD? But it can't. Uh, it's very sparse. Very um, um, just as almost as if a car's going by. Right. That kind of vibe. Okay. And so in the windows, it's um, so yes, I try to use those, especially for uh, video. Uh, I never really use it for. Um, for stills, mm -hmm. but mainly for video, I kind of work with that kind of um, right. uh, work, and especially with yes, definitely with flare. I I'm absolutely love flares. Now, with your flare, because some some people they, especially in video, the flare is like quickly. You know, it's just sort of a like um, a second. You know, some people could be. Some people want it to sort of sit there for right. a little bit. Right. How, how do you feel about that, or does it just sort of depend upon composition or? It, composition, but as well as if you're move, moving, is right. that the flare is kind of giving that spark, the kind of the, the like a little glint, right? But mm -hmm. it's it's especially if you're working with a face that right. you're kind of going back and forth and and it goes in and out. Yep. Um, there's uh, one of the I've done, done it many times, but one of the ones I remember is actually there's a slit in a, um, a door. And there's actually a, an artist here in town, and he had a huge barn. Mm -hmm. There's a slit in the door, and it's a perfect uh, morning light. And so I really wanted to kind of get that and just and him and with the, the dust. It was oh, a, and you know, just kind of like got that, that vibe. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And yeah. it just had this, and he had was wearing like a cowboy hat type mm -hmm. of thing. And it was just beautiful. And so you just kind of move back and forth. And you're only going to use maybe four seconds of that, but it's going to be four beautiful seconds. Right, right. And just a oh. you know, kind of subtle silhouette. It's a, it turned out really beautiful. So, oh. and, But I also, um, if you're working with uh, lights that are, um, um, that are um, kind of on the outside of the house mm -hmm. and you're using that and you kind of want to use uh, like a kitchen scene, all right. Where there's this beautiful light coming in that, um, like if you have a joker outside the, um, the window, it's shining in sunlight type right. of vibe that you want to use that as well. And kind of, so, um, so it's all about sort of understanding the prop that you have and, and, and where you can place it and what you can do with it. Right. You know, because it, you can't just sort of randomly throw something in there. You really need to think about this beforehand. Right. And that, that's the beauty about, um, you know, great gaffers that they right. just know how to set up light and you have a great DP or you, you know what you want. And right. so people kind of, especially if they know you want flair or, right. um, or, you know, some other subtleties that especially, I mean, if you're, the way I look at light is that you're painting with light. Mm-hmm. And so you want that the subtleties, but not, you don't, I, I never, I, I think many people don't like the, the, the harsh light mm -hmm. where it looks like it's fake. Right. So you really want it to kind of be. Um, Try to diffuse it some. Right. Yeah. And to, to make it look like it is authentic and that it's uh, the real thing. Yeah. And many times I, 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 you get what you take, what you get. Yeah. So if there's really good light out there, so don't, don't, yeah, just, don't just work with it. it. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> However, that light changes. Yeah. And so quickly you, on right, top of that. Exactly. You know. So you do definitely need to, um, you know, set up for that, um, that scene. Oh, man. And it takes a long time too. It's not easy. You know, it, it, I was working with, uh, I have the, we have the black magic design six K camera here at the studio for review. And, I'm running out of time with this. I got to get ready to send it back as the tear rolls down my face. <laughs> um, and I, I had it, I had it at the house cause I was trying to just figure out some type of cinematic footage and I wanted to do it during, during golden hour, uh -huh. you know? 
So I said, well, let me get my son. Let me get him involved because he loves photography and, you know, maybe he'll enjoy being my, my muse, if you will. You got to have muses. And we, we get out there and I'm trying to direct him. And I'm like, man, this light is so awesome. Two minutes later, oh, crap, I'm losing right. light. You know, and he's sort of lollygagging around. I'm like, dude, we need to get through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we well, get through it's this. kind of like that um, in the afternoon when you were shooting outside mm -hmm. and there's that golden hour. Oh, mm -hmm. It only it only takes so long. <laughs> yes, but you could sh you could shoot the um, yeah. heck out of you can and yeah. just uh, make sure that you kind of wait you know, that you shoot everything before then that you need to shoot and then you have those those shots right for to kind of add the kind of um, the extra spice right right and the golden uh, yeah the golden hours are just beautiful especially around here yeah uh, you're working in the vineyards or you're working on a yeah, just like going a, out to the mountains yeah field to table oh, type man. of vibe just oh kind of get gosh. those nice hours. Now, um, like I said, I mentioned that camera. We, we will be doing a, a little demo and review of it on Hands On Tech. That's another show here on the network. That's twit.tv slash hot hands on tech. So stay tuned for that. We'll have something out um, in a couple of weeks on that after we go through and finish up our shots and so forth. Um, but back to these, these tricks here. A lot of people in the community, uh, if you see, if you look at these creative artists on Instagram and you see they got all of these weird flares, such as what I'm showing you on my screen right there, a lot of people will get, will give them mm. crap. They'll poo poo them, oh. you know, and I'm like, well, what, what is so wrong with that shot? This person it's creative, you know, right. Just let it be. There, there's, there's too much negative in the world anyways. Right, why, it, why worry about something like that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, it just drives let, me nuts. Let people be. You know, so that yeah. so that was part of the story yeah. over on F Stoppers right. is this this artist is is well, and there's a bunch of different artists. It's not just mm -hmm. one, um, but Jordy Colitic, I believe that's how you say his last name. He's probably one of the most popular ones out there. Mm -hmm. But people were they were fascinated by this by his his work. But then there's also people that were just saying this is so stupid. And ah. I, I I don't get it because it's art. You know, you don't necessarily have to like it, but you don't necessarily need to just go out there and but why, downgrade why, why someone's put, uh, art. Why even put energy into it? I and know. it just I, and that person is doing what he wants to do or right. she's wanting to do, and just and if you don't experiment, then you're not so. <clears throat> the worst mistake, you know, mm -hmm. the worst mistake is not doing it. Right, and you, you can making mistakes is a great thing. You learn from them. Right. At least you're supposed to. Right. <laughs> I don't so, always learn from mine because I and, know I've repeated And that's something. not a mistake. That's somebody's mm. uh, making an effort to do something to express themselves. And uh, I I feel that we just have so much negative stuff in the world anyways. Why you An bother with that? Another thing I don't think a lot of people understand is when you, like you mentioned the gaffers or, or DP, uh, what people see on the silver screen you know, has nothing to do with what actually happened behind the scenes. Because mm -hmm. if you see what happens behind the scenes, you're like, how in the heck right. is this going to work? You know, uh, uh, I know this is probably a bad example, but think about um, <laughs> someone depicting themselves on an airplane or what have you right. in an airplane seat. And a common meme is they take a white plastic toilet seat oh, and they hold it up just at the right angle uh -huh. with the scene in the background, you got that shallow depth of field, but if it's held at the right angle and the light looks just right, it looks like you're on an airplane flying. No kidding. You know, but the tricks, right. But other people are just assuming, Oh, that's just some stupid ideas. Why are you, you why are you bringing a toilet seat to, to the studio? You know, <laughs> 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 you know, but it actually works. And there's a lot of stuff that, that DPs and gaffers, they just have those little bit of nuanced tricks in the back of their head that nobody ever thinks about. I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I worked with this person I was telling you about, Pennsylvania. Right. I worked with this person, or she she was amazing. I and mean, she, she was one of these people that absolutely knew what the director wanted. Mm -hmm. And in order to get that, she had to, she works people in a way that they, that they were able to get that shot. Yeah in the most beautiful way and working with light, even the subtlety lights, like uh, putting light underneath the mm -hmm. um, 
a shelf so it shines just right. Yeah, just and a nice the, little kicker on it. Right. <laughs> but she was amazing. I and she she came in mm-hmm. and she said, Look, we need to do this shot. I need you let me know what you need and I'll do it. And everybody goes, Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. She's got it. And and she absolutely nailed it every time. And she was phenomenal. It was I, I and now it makes you wonder how many hours and hours of of of, of just hanging out together those two had to figure out that chemistry you know it just well sometimes you uh don't have that um uh, chemistry right mm-hmm. away and somebody comes in and you're working with basically a new crew all the time yeah although there's um yeah. there's some people that you work with all um right um, some people uh, sort of have their own little crew some people right. some exactly. studios if you will but this uh, the director and she uh, had worked together and um, they absolutely knew, she knew what he wanted mm-hmm. and he knew what she could do mm-hmm. and let it run. And she was, I have to tell you, she was, I, she, the way she set up the lights and just so beautiful and nothing harsh. It was just subtle, uh, real, um, a real professional, mm-hmm. real professional. I love that. Now, mentioning this makes me think back to our Adobe Max conversation where we talked about building those relationships mm-hmm. with people. I hear a lot that if you're a photographer, you need to make friends with a graphic designer and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe that after, you know, several years of, of making friends with a couple of them and just seeing their vision, I, I totally mm-hmm. believe that. And I will put a stamp on that anytime. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Making relationships or just making with, relationships with, you know, yeah, you want to make relationships with, with photographers, but you know, what about figuring out the, 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 the nuance of a gaffer, uh, you, know, so right. that, you know, some people just sort of overlook that. Heck, I mean, we're in this beautiful studio and there's a lot of times I will walk back there into the, to the, to the cave, if you will, where Mr. John is doing all the magic, right. I will go back there and just watch so I can get a better understanding of what it is the team is doing, how they're trying to make us sound good and look good. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so I can be better right. on both sides of it, you know? So I think you should try to take that into photography with, you know, getting yourself a graphic designer as a friend and understanding their thought process with, how they're working with colors, right. you know, and how yeah. they're working with balance and things mm-hmm. of that nature. Right. Actually, uh, going back to the, um, the um, designer, actually, mm-hmm. a friend and I, his name is uh, Tyler Young here in town. And so he um, initiated and we created a, a website called uh, feelsonoma.com. Yeah. And it's basically stories around um, the area yeah. and um, really beautiful stories. But his graphic sense... Mm-hmm was the one that, and the relationship with the photo, uh, photograph really made that uh, website just uh, beautiful. And right. uh, and that's where the relationship, and we've had a relationship for a very long time and mm-hmm. we've been able to, and he's the, uh, he's the one that actually helped uh, create, and they actually did create the uh, Rivertown Revival photo booth. Right. But his graphic sense, his vision was the, the thing that was able to kind of uh, make, make things happen and make the photographs work in a way that, um, really told a story and really gave a sense and vibe of um, kind of the community in which we live mm-hmm. in. So um, I remember looking at that website. How, how long had you guys been working on that and, and, and getting that project out and out to the masses to see, you know, this beautiful, beautiful. It's images. been about four years, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we've been kind of slow at it right now. And mm-hmm. we, we, it's a kind of a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a website of love. Mm-hmm. And basically, we're not getting paid for it. Right. Like that. It's just basically telling stories around the community. And what's the link again for the it's people a, listening? It's uh, dot com. Fieldsonoma.com. Yeah. And it's a just a, and there's other photographers that we've uh, been um, involved as well. Mm-hmm. And it's, it really is, a, it's just a really uh, beautiful, um, we live in a really beautiful community and uh, very talented. And there, there's these, um, nuggets of um, of uh, gold, you know, I don't know, just <laughs> great nuggets out there. Right. And um, like one of the stories is a, a lady who actually repairs uh, baseball mitts. Okay. And uh, she was a sandal maker. And then, uh, yeah, a sandal maker. And then somebody brought in a, um, a glove and, she, and asked her if she would be able to repair it. Right. 
from that point on, from the seventies to now, she's a, and really? she works with gloves from all around the world. Man. Yeah. And I can right just, there in Katati. And I can just imagine, you know, just shooting that, just shooting those working hands. Oh my gosh. She's amazing. I just, she has this one fingernail, this, um, uh, thumbnail is red. Right. And everything else is kind of, <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. So you got to go to the site to kind of see it. It's Field actually Sonoma. really quite wonderful. Yeah. Fieldsonoma.com. We'll link to that in the show. Uh, in the show notes for folks out there with their favorite podcast catcher. Um, but yeah, that, that was, that was on my brain. Um, relationships are important. It, it, it's, yeah. And you don't want to burn bridges. I'm, I, <laughs> you know, we're going to have some more people on the show here in future episodes. And one of them, um, I can go ahead and tease it now. Miss Lisa Carney. She's an awesome photo finisher. Oh, nice. You know, she does, pretty much any of the movie posters and TV posters that you see in your Netflix queue or what have you, mm -hmm. she probably did it. Oh gosh. You know? okay. That's great. <laughs> She's really good. And I've listened to her on other shows and, and, and even in some of the Adobe events. And she talked about, Hey, you photographers, you better find your graphic graphic designer, you know, and, it, and it finally stuck after mm -hmm. seeing what she says, because she incorporates a lot of that in her photo finishing, you know, she can, she can shoot, you know, but she leans more on putting everything in mm -hmm. place. You know, if you see that, that beautiful uh, poster of say Spider-Man or the dark Knight, mm -hmm. it has a certain feel to it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of elements in that, that, that she, or, you know, any finisher they put together to make it just sort of work together. It's not just the dark night standing there. Right. But there's other things that they have, you know, composited mm -hmm. into this image. And it just takes a certain level of, of creativity and understanding how stuff works together. And this color will complement that color mm -hmm. versus not. But also how a, um, a person works, a person works too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you're some, many times a, a, a creative person will actually send you on a job mm -hmm. because they know the work that you're going to bring back. That's true. I, I've I've been fortunate a time or two on that, um, and it, it it it's definitely helpful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. definitely helpful to get that one more invoice that you could put out mm -hmm. there, you know, because someone referred to you, and definitely make sure you pay it forward on that. Um, one more thing. Um, Golden Hour sounds like some sort of cult Some thing. sort of cult thing. Well, okay. All right. Chat room. Let, let, let's go ahead and fix that now. Golden Hour sounds like some sort of cult thing. All right. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Golden Hour and Blue Hour are specific times in a day. Mm -hmm. um, think of Golden Hour usually more so in the morning at sunrise, mm -hmm. uh, just as the sun is getting ready to come up. Uh, you don't see the sun just yet, but you, you start to get a little more light in. And as the sun begins to come up, it's a specific soft golden yellow right. light outside. No harsh just, shadows. Right. There's just so, everything is just really, really soft and it, and it's very, very cinematic. It's the very ideal beautiful. time. Mm -hmm. It's the ideal time to shoot. Um, when you're dealing with photography, yes, your camera needs a good amount of light to work properly. Mm -hmm. So some people will think shooting at 12 o'clock when the sun is straight up in the air yeah. and it's, it's totally, you know, illuminating the land. But you have not, some, yeah, you have some harsh shadows. Yeah, then, that's right? not the best time mm -hmm. to shoot. I right. mean, it's, it's, it's a little too hard mm -hmm. and it doesn't really flatter your, your images. But that golden hour and then blue hour, more so at the end of the day, is, you know, sun, sun is starting to set different tone of light. Sometimes you see some magentas and things mm -hmm. like that, at least in my experience. What mm -hmm. about you? I see, um, gold. Yeah. And it's just, <laughs> and, but it's just a better, it's a better looking light mm -hmm. for photography, especially for landscape people. Um, even at street photography, if you can catch oh, right. some, some golden hour mm -hmm. with uh, street photography and get people just being themselves mm -hmm. in the moment there's a lot of good stories that you can tell with just one click of a shutter and that's where um, we're talking about uh, flares too mm -hmm. if you could catch it right there's a, a nice little flare or some kind of um, mood that can be um, 
that you could capture. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of well, around here, um, if you're doing print media work, uh, a lot of times you'll see some really beautiful images of um, like people sipping wine at mm-hmm. a picnic table out in a vineyard, and there's uh, a golden hour where um, the light is just perfect. It's kind of um, kind of matches the mood of right. having you know, that <laughs> wine or whatever. But yeah, I can. Oh man, I need if. if Next time you get on a wine shot, I, I need to I need to watch you in action on that because I can only imagine the vibes that you get being right here in wine country, and people are going to take it really daggum seriously. So, right. So it's I can oh I bet that's a cool set to be on. <laughs> it's a, it's, well, and it's, yeah, and it's um, and basically it's there's really very little light that we put we don't put up any lights. Right. It's, you're just u- utilizing the light that you have. Right. And shooting yeah, yeah, glass yeah. bottles is really, really hard. It is. You know, we also have a stylist, though. Right. We have a stylist who sets up the table, kind of makes it, kind of uh, so it's um, uh, looks natural or whatever. That's, right. That they're, everything that needs to be natural, conveyed. Ish. natural ish. Yeah, exactly right. Because yes. <laughs> I know most people don't necessarily have you know berries around the bottom of their wine bottles at their house. So mm-hmm. natural ish. Mm-hmm. That's what we'll say. All right. Okay. So one more thing. What what when we were here last week, we talked about the Sony Sony line of cameras that was, you know, been re- been released and mm-hmm. um, the lenses and things like that. And you got into your gear and you said that you were still looking at that new A7R4. A week later, has that changed your mind? Have you ready to been to, been closer to pulling the trigger? You know what's interesting is that I've been going back and forth. So I have a, a two right now, A7R2. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the three is out there still. Yep. And yeah. then a four. And so dollar I'm thinking for dollar. That I'm three think, is a good price. Uh, exactly right. When you're looking at a thousand dollars less mm-hmm. for um the three than uh the four. That's why I wanted to ask because I started seeing some some price changes uh here recently since it since the four has been mm-hmm. announced. And I was like, hmm. Then you think about you can get one used. Oh. Mm-hmm. For even cheaper. Right. You know, so I, I was like, well, I'm going to ask Woozy if he's still thinking about that Mark IV. You know? Yeah, I, 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 I got to tell you, I, um, I have to really look at um, the way that the um, uh, that the screen is on the back, uh-huh. especially for focusing. Um, obviously, I would use a monitor, or whatever right. it was, but um, I would have to look at um, if I'm able to kind of focus a little bit better. Mm. Um, the two is kind of harsh at some degree. But yeah. the three and the four, I saw that uh, the, the the pixels is much finer, right? And you're able to um, kind of get the details a little bit more, right? I don't know. I think <laughs> um, I have to kind of try the two. We're going to show up next week, and he's going to be like, "Look at my new camera." <laughs> <laughs> you got the four, I have the three. We could try to switch a little bit. <clears throat> I know how this rolls. Like, mm-hmm. Trust me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get on up out of here this week, folks. Um, any parting shots you'd like to, to give to our listeners before we go, just to sign off and get them started for a weekend of shooting? Any words of encouragement you'd like to share or, or ideas or a challenge to them, if you will? Right. Um, I would think that, um, gosh, if you have a weekend to kind of uh, play around, mm-hmm. um, I would I would actually pick a subject. Mm-hmm. And just go and uh, and press yourself to do it, okay. Um, almost like a wish list, okay. And go out and um, and do it, and and play around with depth of field, right. And play around with if you have different lenses, uh, look at um, what lens conveys what you uh, I say the different stories, I, right. I, and I would really just go out there and play. Mm-hmm. And if you're working with people, maybe walk down the street or actually investigate your town. Right. And maybe there's somebody who you want to tell a story about. Do, do a little recon, if right, you will. Right, exactly right. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe there's somebody interesting that, you know, I want to I know more about that person. Mm-hmm. And and go to that person and just say, hey, you know, mm-hmm. I want to, I um, photo, you know, kind of do a photo essay on you. Right. And kind of see what you're about and, and, uh, and just have fun and, and learn uh, about, uh, people uh, through your camera, and, and and I like to add to that because I love that idea, and I've done that myself. Mm-hmm. And it works out pretty pretty nicely. Um, if you have a local coffee shop, uh, mm-hmm. 
local coffee shops are always just sort of pumping with energy, whether it's the energy of the customers coming in sort of groggy. Mm -hmm. That makes for a good shot. You can see it there. Right. Oh my gosh, please give me my coffee, coffee <laughs> now. And then there's the energy of the baristas behind the counter. Mm, that's all they fun. are so 200 mile an hour mm -hmm. in everything they do. Mm -hmm. And then there's the energy of the actual process of creating that coffee, the grinding of the beans mm -hmm. and, and the steeping. And, and it's an art to mm -hmm. get a good, a really good cup of coffee. Right. It's an art to it. And I had two coffee houses back home in North Carolina that I frequented in we had pretty good relationships and there was times I'd show up just to have my coffee and work on something. Or there were times I'd show up to say, Hey, I want to shoot you guys today. And they were all for it. Right. Because they, they love, and don't they get, loved it. And, and they love the stories that we created right. and we sort of collaborated and worked together and they put things on their social media and, you know, it just, it just worked. And that energy, you could see it through the lens and the colors you go in there in the morning, you're going to get a different set of colors mm -hmm. from the lighting standpoint. Go in there at lunch, go in there in the evening. It's going to be totally different. So do a little bit of recon. And, and like I say, I would just check out a coffee shop. All of the textures and... Oh, well, there yes. might be a good mechanic there too. You yep. know, there might be something extremely interesting that uh, there's... Right where I live, there's all these... Um, there's a truck mechanic mm -hmm. and he takes like old trucks 50 like um, the chevy fit um, from the 50s whatever, right and he works on them yeah that's a cool subject right, right. why not go in and say hey i just want to explore with my camera right um want to document you for maybe a week mm -hmm. you know kind of get different um and and a lot of times they, they they don't mind if you walk in there and just just walk in there and humble and and be polite they're, they're like oh cool yeah, well, we they, appreciate they, you. We appreciate you noticing what we uh, do. And you know? be a fly on the wall. Right. Don't get up in their yeah, face. Yeah, don't get in their face. Yeah. <laughs> but just be a fly on the wall and um, and hang out. And and you'll start seeing what needs to be photographed and right. what what is interesting to you and what yeah. might be interesting to him yeah. or her. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just important to kind of play a little bit. But also, yeah. like the coffee, get in there real tight when they're grinding. Right. And sh and. And then you'll see like the coffee beans, like yep. or the coffee kind of sprouting or whatever, yep. or the the foam blooming, right? Blooming is what it's called. Oh, Trust okay. Me. Trust me. me, I've been schooled on that. Oh. <laughs> blooming, <laughs> but yeah, I think. Gosh, if you have time to do it, just have fun. And actually, I, uh, somebody reminded me yesterday that I need to get out of uh, behind the um, um, the computer and get out. Oh boy, I do, yeah. and and it's I've been editing a lot, and I was reminded just get out yeah. and start um same here same here i've been behind my my screen a little bit too much but i'm going to fix that i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to fix that actually i'm going to work on that this weekend i'm going to take your 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 advice and your challenge and i'm going to go out and work on it this weekend yeah just one person one, one story one dadgum story yeah i got this <laughs> and and don't be afraid to um work with shallow depth of field go real tight yeah dark Whatever. I'm going to have some fun. Explore. I'm going to have some fun. All right. The folks. world is your canvas, my friend. Yeah, just enjoy it. Just take <laughs> advantage of it and artfully, and you'll, you'll be just And fine. experience the creative process. Yes, yes. All right, folks. We're going to end this episode of Focus on Photography for the week. Um, this has been a lot of fun, Wolves, just, just sitting back and chatting with you and picking your brain. I love doing this. Yeah, this, I think this, the community is going to grow too. Doing this every Thursday, it's just, uh, it just gets my Thursday morning started out. Just nice. great. I really appreciate that. You sure I it's really, not the coffee? No, nah, I'm not too fond of the coffee choice today. Y'all like this coffee. <laughs> I, I mean, eh, it's doing its job. That's nah. about all I can say. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing its job. But thank you to the chat room for being in here bright and early and uh, hanging out with us today. Thank you to all of you that have clicked the subscribe options on our podcast here on your favorite uh, podcast catcher, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Pocket Cast, all of them. Appreciate your support there. And also be sure to check out our Twit community. That's where we hang out online and just chat with one another, whether it's just talking about photography things here or what kind of computers you have, or just random conversations of just, you know, just hanging out with the rest of the Twit army. It's a lot of fun. So in your browser, go to twit.community to sign up. And uh, 
and enjoy the conversation. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Wait Uh-oh. a minute. Chat room is yelling at me. Ant, do not talk smack to the coffee. No <laughs> doubt. Sorry about that. I'm not going to talk smack. I'm just going to mm, push it good. away, Mr. Burke. <laughs> Mr. Burke, I'm just going to push that coffee away. I won't say anything else to it. How's that? Uh, thank you all again. Uh, be sure to follow Wolves over on Instagram. That is Hey Wolves is his handle. You can follow me at Ant underscore Pruitt over on Instagram. And follow Twit. We do a lot of behind the scenes stuff on Instagram and the, the uh, social media team here. They have a lot of fun just you know, shoving that camera in our face at some very interesting times. Um, So you never know what you're going to see over there. So go ahead and give us a follow there. Thank you again to all of our technical team here in the studio for making us look and sound good here on the, um, on the, on the set. And um, we will catch you all next week uh, about 9 a.m. ish here on um, focus on photography. And we'll just talk about a little more Adobe max after the fact and uh, some other things. So y'all stay tuned. Thank you again for the support. We'll catch you later. Thank you.